All right, so in this video, I was interviewed by Shane Conley from HowToWrench.com. So I just want to upload this video to my channel and share it with you guys. Um, if you guys don't know who Shane is, go ahead and check out his website and especially his YouTube channel. He's got over 600 videos on motorcycle repair and all kinds of stuff. Very useful stuff. And Shane has been a motorcycle uh, mechanic instructor uh, at a college for for many years so he does a really good job of explaining things so uh, enjoy the video and let me know in the comments below what you think hey friends it's Shane from howtorinch.com and we have a special guest uh, in the studio today all COVID uh, compliant <laughs> and we got uh, Matthew uh, over at uh, motorcycle how to repair and uh, a what's really funny and the reason I wanted to uh, take some time with uh, Matthew is that we get comments all the time like, oh, have you seen this? Or, hey, we saw your name over there, or whatnot. And most people don't realize how many times us uh, content creators actually BS and bounce ideas off each other. And and uh, and I wanted to kind of showcase some stuff Matthew has uh, out that's new. And just an impressive fella. I've enjoyed uh, you know talking to you and working with you over the years on ideas and, and bouncing things around. And thought it'd be fun for both our viewers. I think I'd be so curious to see how many mutual subs we have yeah no kidding i mean we've been in contact uh with each other for what like two years probably you know through email phone and, oh and whatnot so yeah at least it's about time we're in front of the camera together right so. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and it's uh you know i don't know if you ever hear this but i'll i'll have people that'll reach out and they'll be like uh Hey, I seen something over on someone else's channel or whatnot. I'm like, yeah, cool. You know, we talked about that or whatnot. It's just, uh, it, it's funny. Like I said, how many of our subs like see both our stuff, you know, and, and, uh, sure, you know, yeah. relate to it. So the excited, excited to do something together. And, uh, I, the thing that you've really done that's like significantly, I think stood out for me. And, and I guess you'd have to decide if this is the same for you, but is on your vapor blasting uh, cabinet designs, uh, the whole do-it-yourself market there. Yeah, I mean, um, I looked into getting a machine, and it was really expensive, and I just figured, you know, why not just build one? And then I know a lot of people, obviously, are in the same boat as I am. You know, they want a machine like that. They don't use it often, but, you know, hey, you could build one, save yourself some money, and, and you're up and running in your own garage, you know? Yeah, and so originally, uh, you know, we're sponsored by Vapor Honing Technologies, and they've been instrumental in, in our work here, and so we're giving them a big shout-out as well. But the, uh, it's just there's the different needs in different markets. I mean, like you get people that, you know, this only works in their budget, and this works for another person. And I remember, like, originally, uh, Vapor Honing Technologies, when they partnered up with us, they were like – pretty brand new in the game. Like we were probably one of, I, I think we might've been the first influencer and I wouldn't even say that I knew how to do it. I just knew how to make content, make videos and be like, wow, look at this magic wand. Like this thing's amazing. And where you and your company took it a step further is you have a, an engineering background and you really decided, you know what? I want to figure out how to make this and I'm going to make it myself and see what it takes and what it costs you know so for the people like myself and other people say i want to pick one part number vapor honing technologies that's definitely an option so tell us a little bit more about like your background and like what made you want to do this yeah so my background is um well i've been interested in anything that burns gas since i was little okay <laughs> and then I, I got my first dirt bike well i started riding when i was like eight uh and then i Got my first dirt bike when I was uh, 12 or 13 or 14 or something like that. And uh, that's when I started wrenching, okay? And then I took automotive classes in high school and uh, worked at a few bike sh motorcycle shops uh, prior to college. But then um, my dad's an engineer, and I kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps, and I just wanted to try it. Uh, so I went to engineering school. Um and then I've been working for several different companies, designing all kinds of things. And in my career as an engineer, you come across uh, all sorts of things, pneumatics, uh, electronics, and you work with other engineers. So everything that's in place on this vapor blaster 
this stuff I learned like in my career over the past 15 years, you know? Can you point your camera at it by chance? Is that possible? Or yeah, yeah. Kind so of swing here, it over? Let well, here, let me just pick it up. I think it's on a cord here. Now this is so, the this is the new one. This is what kind of yeah. got us talking. This is like so. So this is the wood one. Um, this is the best I can do because my cord's attached here. No worries. Um, yeah, this is made out of three sheets of plywood. It is waterproofed. It is strong, and I feel that you know it'll work just fine. I mean, people are building fish tanks out of wood, okay? Because the glass aquariums cost a lot of money, so. Um, you know, it's it's super inexpensive to build it out of wood, and you just waterproof it, and it'll it'll be fine. I've been using it like crazy. Hey, every um, actually, yeah. Here's here's. Uh, can you see this? I've yeah. been working on this transmission case a little bit, just practicing. Yeah. Uh, so this is all out of that machine, just just testing yeah. different stuff. So yeah, I'll uh I'll make sure and put a link below to your plans and to your video. You did a great job of putting together that intro video, like explaining, because I think even somebody like myself, we'd be like, what, wood and water and high pressure? Like, at first you'd think, wow. And then your research on it, I, I, friends, uh, you know, fans of the channel, if you're if you're new to Matthew's channel, go check him out, go sub. You don't know how much that helps us. Uh, you know, growing that, yeah, that sure. base is instrumental and i hope any of uh matthew's subs that are watching this as well please sub subscribe to our channel i mean that's that's one thing that really helps us especially for uh that um that interest to partners of people that like to partner up with us you know they look at that stuff so please i got to do that little plug-in that shameless plug-in of subscribe to our channels well but, thank you for that uh the other the other thing about it though is like you just did a great video like and what i found impressive is you could tell your engineering background numerous times i've talked to you you're like i researched this it's not like you just went out one day and thought i'm just gonna cut some wood up and put a ceiling on yeah. it like your plans um i i was i was fortunate enough to uh to get a, a purchase uh the the original or get, excuse me get a copy of the original plans back when you were kind of just throwing that idea out there and even on the original ones, which are still available, so like if your yeah. budget is to build the, how much is it to build the standard cabinet that you did originally? That's not closed loop. So yeah, so the Harbor Freight version, you can build as cheap as five hundred fifty bucks with no features, and I'm talking features like no wiper, um, no regulator, no foot pedal, you know, just bare bones just to get the machine working. But obviously, just like any car that you see out on the lot, if you want leather seats and this and that, obviously the, the price goes up, right? Okay. All those little bells and whistles, but it could, I, I built it up to 1800 bucks, which is loaded like a Cadillac with every feature, closed loop, heater, immersion heater, and, and so forth. So um, it just really depends on and what you need. And then you can also add stuff as you go. Like I first made it open loop and then I'm like, oh man, I'm dragging the garden hose out here and it sucks. So I converted it to closed loop and then I added a heater. So you can, it's like modular, if you will, you know, you just keep yeah. adding features if you want, you know. And, and I'll say this too. One thing that I thought was really impressive as far as from a product is that when you add these features, if someone bought the original plan, they continue to get that new content for that purchase. Yeah. So... I've done updates and, you know, I just gave it to the people that originally bought it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've seen you do that and I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's impressive. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's an ongoing thing, right? You know, we all learn something new and you share it. So yep. I just stick it in the plans, yeah. Yeah. I've just seen a lot of people out there where, you know how it is, everybody, every marketer out there is telling you, oh, give something away free and get them in the door and then charge them extra. And you've picked this product and said this is this product and, and you got those updates and then that kind of moves us into the new plan uh the the new one really was a size issue a cost issue and then it, it's just like a cadillac machine for the do-it-yourselfer uh yeah. how long well first off what kind of money is someone looking at to build this monster you know like put a so, motorcycle frame in yeah so this one's uh 42 by 30 uh, 
the, those dimensions. Um, it cost me three grand, but it has every feature on there. I put a lot of nice parts on there. Um, you know, a retail machine that has all these features on it is like 7,500 bucks. Yeah. So, um, now obviously you can strip this guy down to reduce the cost if you don't need fancy stuff, but you know, this is all the stuff I wanted. You know, I've been vapor blasting for two years now and this is all the stuff that was important to me. Yeah. You know, and, you know, just to do those cost comparisons, just to be, like, transparent in how we talk about, you know, everything has its positive and negative. So the person that has the time, the person that has tools, the person that has a saw, the person that has some electrical ability, all that, that's where your plans are, like, rock star for them. And the person yeah. that just says, hey, once again, I just want this thing done and they have the budget, that's where, like, Vapor Honing Technologies comes in. I, I want to sure. just make it – I just want to make it clear. I'm not trying to be partial to one or the other. We're just talking about options. And right. um, I think that there's a huge market of people out there, too, that just enjoy the process of building something themselves. And that's where what you've done is you've just eliminated a lot of the mistakes and costly mistakes. Because here's, here's what I saw when, like, vapor blasting first came out is, of course, somebody looks at something. They go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to throw a pump in there. And then they didn't use the right pump for, like, you know, dirty water and heavy duty or whatnot. And then the pumps not last them a week. And right. then they're spending more money and they're spending more money versus where your plans are. Hey, this is everything I've learned. This is the way to do it and not actually cost yourself extra money. And I, I would have to venture to say pretty safely from what I saw from the first ones that the amount of time and money saved more than paid for the plans multiple times. Like, oh yeah, it, you know my well, time's yeah, valuable. So like, I'm not. I I don't want to sit on the internet, and I don't want to watch. And we all, I'm sure you get caught in loopholes of watching my videos or other videos. I get caught in loopholes of watching your videos. And sometimes I'll watch like a a carburetor video and go, "What the hell? Did I just watch Matthew for an hour for? Oh, because I like him. <laughs> I like what's going on. And nice. uh, so we get caught in those wormholes, right? And uh, <laughs> it's just funny. I saw Cody, our buddy Cody over at uh, 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 Motorcycle MD. He commented on a video last night. And I said, oh, there's Cody. He's still watching videos. You know? <laughs> and yeah. uh, But anyway, when it comes to like the research into something, when you find something that's so legit like your plans, I'm telling you, friends, go check out these videos. Go check out these links because it's just going to save you all this effort Matthew and I are also in a vapor honing chat group. I learned so much from that channel and that group. I, I just made the coolest, the coolest freaking tool for vapor blasting carburetors. God, I'm half tempted to show it to you right now. Yeah, what, what is it? I'm interested. Dude, I don't know. It's, it's almost so sick. <laughs> you know what? I have to. Because how much have right. I learned from you and the other people? Should I just go grab it? Yeah, grab it. Go ahead. You're, and I, I'll keep talking. I kind of think you're going to shit your <laughs> pants. So everybody hang tight. I, I'm just going to release it now. I was going to do a video, right. but I'm just going to go get it. All right, go get it. Uh, in the meantime, um, the Harbor Freight plans, it's like six, seven hours of video. The wood plans, like 13 hours of video, step-by-step, step, 35 chapters, 20 PDF documents. Um and one thing I want to note is, like, there are free YouTube videos on how to build vapor blasters. But I watch those videos, and sometimes they they leave me with questions. And also, sometimes they, I've seen them. They don't use the right parts. I know for a fact because I've tested some of those parts, and I know that there's better ones available. So, um, also, a lot of the parts that I use... I've really reduced the cost on it. So even though the plans cost some money, the part list will be less expensive. Okay. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I was after with this thing. So. You selling your product? I was just talking. I was, I was, it was just filler talk. That damn good thing because I don't want to edit this video. I want it to just be live and transparent. <laughs> okay. All right. What do you, what do you have? So, <clears throat> One thing that I've seen people get into a lot of trouble, 
and it, it was definitely me in the beginning too, is that you just kind of took for granted when you were vapor blasting, not soda blasting. Oh yeah, I'm just going to vapor blast this. And there's just places you don't want sand, uh, uh, the abrasive to go. Sure. Th that's why in all reality for me, we really use three processes now. We use an ultrasonic cleaner to start. We use a soda blaster for internals. And then I do vapor okay. blasting for the beautification of the outside. Because the vapor okay. blasting, without a doubt, is so ridiculously fast, right? <clears throat> yep. Like, I'm impressed at what soda could do, but at my labor rate at 80 bucks an hour, no one could afford me to sit in there long enough to just use soda. Like, I'm in right. there way too long, right? So, okay. uh, the other thing is, when you vapor blast, I'm sure you've ran into this, like, especially anywhere there's like, oops, I'm in the wrong camera here. I keep looking at my computer. There's uh, linkages, and that media yeah. wants to get in there, and it gets really crunchy, and it's like, you can't right. just sit here and, and start cranking on that, because if you, if you just sit and crank on that, you're grinding or sanding right. away, and especially like on throttle linkages, you could be changing the size, and, and that's a problem. So you, you don't want to restore something and create problems. So my, my previous practice has been... I use rubber plugs, I use corks, I use duct tape, and there's, I don't care what you do, like I saw somebody in that chat room recently was talking about how they were taping their motor up and vapor blasting it, and I'm like, yeah. uh, like a hundred people yeah, went no. in there and went, you can't do that, and they're like, oh, well, the shop's doing it, that shop, it's not their motor, and they, whoever's yeah. doing that does not know what they're doing, sorry. Man, I, I would never do that. I don't care you know? how much you try, the media is getting in this car. Right. And so you as a, as a restorer have that responsibility that you got to get it out there and you can't hurt things. So the, the plan that I came up with, I'm going to readjust that camera. You're going you're gonna to crap, but <laughs> I took these little squishy balls okay. and, and basically made a fixture where I could smash them into the inlets <laughs> and out. Oh, look at you grinning, man. You're, you're, you know where I'm going nice. with this, right? Check yeah. this out. My, and my original plan was I drilled holes through these and put a drawstring, and I thought I was, like, super smart. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to, like, drop the string through and then use the string to suck them up. But I, I couldn't yeah. get them tight enough for, like, this Honda carburetor. Look at this. Uh, you see that big, goofy lip on the inlet? Yeah. Well, a round ball, when you get on that, it doesn't – I'll just move the camera. This round ball, tell me if I'm in view. Yeah, you're good. Okay, it doesn't It doesn't really want to get that top unless I really mash it. But if, sure. I, if I really mash it, I can accomplish complete seal. Okay. So watch what I made. I'm so freaking stinking proud of this thing. Let's see if I can make this happen here. <clears throat> So those are just like stress balls, right? Uh, they're not even that. They're, they're, uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, but the same kind of uh, squishy material, right? Yeah, you know what I think. My my future plan. I was actually thinking of using racket balls. Okay. Um, but what these were is they were from honestly, I got them at Hobby Lobby, and they're just like a, a kid's toy. They're just a squishy ball. They're not. They're not really as strong as what I've seen like most uh, squishy balls. But here's what I did. I went to Harbor Freight and got this welding clamp, and then I welded the head tight. I put a washer. I, I welded a just a uh, drywall screw. Can you okay. see it? Yeah, yeah, okay, I can cool. see it. So basically what I was trying to do was also make this kind of hands-free. So you could see I even have a Harbor Freight clamp. And then when you thread these on, and you, I got six of these for six bucks. So for me... Okay. A t if it, I did, I just did four carburetors, and I'm kind of considering these still usable. But if I did four carbs at a two dollar shop supply, I'm already worth it. Oh yeah. You know what I mean. So anyway, you can just put these on. But check this out. So then, what I do is I just walk this up, and I just smash it up there good. And then, if I want, I can even crank it in. Mm -hmm. But now it even gives me like a. And what I've learned Rotation. is to kind of hold yeah. that, and then. Can you imagine the consistency that I get? Yeah. And watch nice. this. Watch this. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to the vapor blaster. 
Right. I'm digging this. Huh, that's nice, man. So no media gets uh, in the throttle shafts or anything? Next to nothing. You know what okay. I mean? Like, so you remember, remember how I showed you, like, you know, you know, you know, the crunchiness that I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I, I've experienced that. And, um, I actually had, I did that. I was doing an XR 70 carb for my brother and, um, you know, it has a throttle slide, but it has a butterfly choke. Right. Yep. Uh, I had to vapor blast it for whatever reason. And then, um, the ultrasonic would not clean the media out of it. It was all binding up, and I had to take it all apart. And yeah. then ultrasonic it, it again. So, yeah, I mean, media is going to get in there. You, any moving parts, it, it tends to lock it up. You know, what I found to be successful is all before I was taping it off and just spending crazy time, and then that got me next to nothing inside, and I just wasn't getting enough buildup to where I was having a struggle with. The getting it out, I'd use my uh, Mineral Spirits parts washer, and okay. then the ultrasonic. But no matter what, I didn't sit in there and grind away. Like I knew that if I couldn't rotate the shaft, like and I'm talking like wiggle wiggle, I knew that okay. I had to keep cleaning, right? Like right. I had to just right. keep flushing. And so just between having that understanding, but I'm telling you this, dude. Like I'm taking these balls off and literally like right away, just going right to the parts washer and just giving it a rinse. But I could go to water. And the throttle okay. shafts are just working clean. Nice. Yeah. Awesome, dude. I'll have to make one of those. <laughs> now, for people watch this video, I think Matthew just completely understands. I, I took pictures and photos of the whole thing, too, I could share with you. Um, you, I, Obviously, it's simple enough for you. I think an engineer will figure it out, but I, I do have it. I do have it laid out. <clears throat> but the, uh, the other thing about this is I only mock this up just to show you, but when I actually blast it, the cap and the bowl and everything are on place, and then I still have the corks all throughout everything. Okay, um, gotcha. This, this was just to show you that I figured out a way to basically so quickly mash up the, uh, the inlet and outlet for that protection. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging it, man. This thing was just... Nice. I just thought, and this was the welding clamp at Harbor Freight. It's twenty-two bucks. Right. Um. Yeah, dude. I don't know, man. I've been struggling pulling my hair out of trying how to make it more profitable. And right. You know, you're never in the in the space to like try and badmouth people, and that's not the goal. It's just I've seen so many people that are like making claims and and saying oh yeah it's no big deal you don't have to you don't have to protect anything it'll wash out and you know that it won't and then it's kind of a right. struggle like when we're in the space of helping people like is is as openly and honestly as i have have information to um that's what i'm saying i just try and do it the, the the right way or most effective way and i think like something like this can actually turn this into being something a little more profitable from a time standpoint you know I was getting sure. sick. Of, I was just getting so sick of working so hard to like uh, tape those off. And then, do you ever do that where you're like in the middle of the process, and then the tape starts to peel, and you're like, "Shit!" Yeah. Because then yeah. you're like re-acetone, re Like the only way you could truly do it is start over. Um, yeah. I mean, I have this duct tape here, um, duct tape brand, and it's terrible. It doesn't stick very well. It, yeah. I was blasting something and it blew right off. So I mean. You hey, know the, I know the struggles. You know the struggle. <laughs> yeah. the, other, the other thing that I found that's been really helpful is uh, this is a, a new thing I've been doing is uh, wood corks. Okay. I got like from a hobby store. You can get them on Amazon too. I'm going to put all the links and stuff in here. But uh, these wood corks have really stepped up the game. Because uh, let me see if I can just do one quick here. You've, I'm sure you've plugged this stuff. Just be grabbing something there. Yeah. So I used to work, you know, as an engineer, I worked in a manufacturing fa facility, and we did a lot of powder coating, and we had a bunch uh, of silicone uh, caps and plugs. Yep. So I got tons of these and you know nothing sticks to silicone you know the powder coat just flakes off or whatever but um yeah i i have you know just a handful of whatever and and sometimes it works you know i found so yeah i found i'm shocked at how the wood 
did not, it wasn't affected by the water. And man, these tapered little cones from Hobby Lobby. Wait, 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 up. wait. Wood was not affected by the water? No, it they held it. <laughs> it held, oh. <laughs> so you, so oh. you can make a wood blaster, right? All right. So, okay. I see okay. where you're going with this. So, yeah. And I didn't even have to coat it. But when I tried this, you know how it is, man. We're, we're just experimenting all the time, right? We're the creators, right? And I just thought, I saw it. I thought, well, I like that they're tapered for convenience to like just shove it in a hole. I mean, it works in a wine bottle pretty tight, right? So right. I was like, oh, I'll give it a try. But I expected that when I was vapor blasting, I thought it was just going to break apart. I mean, I'm, I, I'm on four carbs and they haven't, they haven't deteriorated at all. Yeah. You can actually, well, the camera's so, not. So I, I did some testing. Oh. Uh, if you, if you go to 90 PSI and you're one inch away from that, you'll destroy the wood. Okay. Um, but you will also destroy probably the part you're working on, right? Right. Or blowing zinc off, or if you aim it at the glass, you're going to ruin the glass. So, I mean, hey, any tool can be destructive, right? Yeah, I remember you uh, talking about that in uh, your plans where you were saying, hey, you know, this is what I've tried and this is what's worked and what hasn't. But, oh, I can't believe I let the cat out of the bag, but the cat's out of the bag, man. You're the first. No, I mean, hey. You're the first. What else are we going to talk about, you know? Yeah. No, I uh, I had planned on sharing it on that, that group channel anyway, just because I feel really fortunate of all the things I've learned that have uh, made me better. And I think that's where we do a lot, you know. But what people yeah. have to realize out there is that it, it's really cool to say, hey, yeah, you know, all this stuff's free. But, you know, I can't stress enough. Please support our channels through, like, you know, T-shirts and donations. And, you know, when we make stuff like this, like, in that little clamp, I can't tell you the number of hours, like, thinking about it. Like, but I can tell you, like, even making it, my first design failed. I didn't like it. My second design. So, like, I, I literally have 20, I have $24 in it, but I got $500 a shop time. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I just, I just hope that subs and, and stuff remember, like, when we try to, you know, pitch ourselves a lot of time it is just to recoup like all the stuff that headset you got on that microphone all that stuff for us to create yeah. all this high content stuff it's expensive you yeah, know i just dropped i literally just got this stuff um a few days ago it was a hundred bucks for this the mic the stand um because i want to do more of this you know a little more collaborating a little more talking and especially uh you know with the pandemic going on and whatnot so this is this is how people communicate nowadays right <laughs> so yeah, sure yeah i mean you know, sure is. Well, anyway, but you know, you know, with that wood blaster, I started thinking about it a year ago, and I started. I got this whole thing in CAD, three D CAD of all the major components because I had to see how, you know, it was all going to go together, and I was messing around with it little by little for about nine months, getting all the parts in there and whatnot to where to before I even cut any wood or any parts, so. Yeah, nine, nine months to a year of just thinking about it, you know? So, yeah, there's some thought in that. Yeah, no doubt. And it's it's funny, you know, I, I think, like, you've been really good about selling a product, and what I've been doing for years is selling a skill set. So uh, just to kind of maybe talk about what we do, how to wrench for your viewers, is we've been doing uh, skill sets, which that's a really hard thing to sell on YouTube because – if you it, like, if, if my garage door breaks, I don't go how to replace my garage door. I go how do I replace my Coleman? Blah blah. Like when people search for a thing on YouTube, it's about being very specific, and I get that. So it's been one of those things I think I've learned from you is like to try and branch off and create like some really intentional uh, products to sell, and that's what we're going to be doing in the future is putting together actual training modules and seminars where somebody can really learn the ins and outs of, of a carburetor from beginning to end. And we still have a lot of people on the channel that do this for a living. At our last Q&A, we had a, a, at least four shops on there. I love seeing that, you know, so it's a mix of do-it-yourselfers and people that are uh, doing it for a living. But that's what we do. We, uh, we've, we're all organized. We got 700 videos on the channel broken into playlists. I couldn't tell you how many playlists, but it's fuel, brakes, two stroke, four stroke Harley. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, you got a ton of content, man. And I, I, some, you know, sometimes people reach out to me 
and they, they have a question. I'm like, well, I don't have a video, but I know Shane does. So I, I go over to your channel and I know exactly which video and I just shoot them that video. Like, hey, watch this. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, yeah, and, and usually they don't come back to me. So they're probably asking you questions or it answers all their questions. So, so that's good. Well, it's kind of funny. You know, we've had to try to figure out a way to, to have some balance. I know that you're married and you have how many kids? I got it here. Four. Just four. Just four. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought you Just were like, four. I thought you were busy. <laughs> uh, oh, dude. You know that the amount of time that, we, and we both have full time jobs. Like, yeah. We put out professional content so people sometimes just think we're hanging out in our garage all day. I, I would love that. If every one of my subs would do like a quarter a month, I could hang out in my garage all the time, right? Right, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, shit, we'd hang out together. I'd get on a little yeah. road trip and you get on oh. a road trip. Bring the kids over to Arizona. Uh, yeah. But the uh, the reality of it is is that we work full time, you know, and I've always had a full time job where a full time job to that job, I'm always married to it, is no less than 50, 60 hours in a full time job. And then doing this, it's it makes it tough to, to try and get the content out at any kind of speed. But um, with that being said, is that the. Uh, the tech service that I provided for a long time, I was just, I couldn't manage like how angry people would get because I didn't respond to them. I'm like, you realize that we get 400 tech question responses a week, 400. And that's wow. just what I could track on YouTube. So that isn't comments. That's not Facebook. That's not Instagram. And so just please remember, don't ever take it personal, but I'll tell you this people that are members of the channel, or uh, do the tech line, uh, they get immediate response, they do uh, donations. We're, we're of course going to pick that phone up to people that support us. But when somebody like messages, you know, middle of the night, like, oh, my, my carbs leaking fuel right now. What do I need? What do I need? Like, you got four, we, we got, we got lives, we got families, we got, you yeah. know, it's, it's not that easy. But I think we found a pretty good balance by having the the tech line and the, the the ability to join a channel and every single week like I get a call and if somebody happens to catch me on the phone I did one the other day and I told the guy I said hey man we just when we get done we donate something I I know your call's not worth 50 bucks it's not worth a tech line call but just do a little something of course and it, just every week you just get the bad ones where they talk your ear off 30 minutes and then nothing and it's like, gotcha. come on, people, get it together, yeah. you know? Uh, but the, I, yeah, I think I mean, I'd, outweigh, I'd outweigh the good. Yeah, I mean, I, I got a beer fund for those reasons. And, you know, I don't push it too hard, but, you know, it's there. And if, you know, people buy me beer all the time just for, for helping them or whatever, and it's, yeah. it's cool. You know, it's a cool yeah. way just to get supported, you know? So I'll tell you what, I seem sure. to, those people that do that for me, and I bet the same for you, I don't forget it. Right. Like, I'm like, dude, put you my remember number, the name. you know, you know, we, we got males, females. We got, I think we might even have some aliens on the channel, <laughs> but, um, I like put my number on speed dial, you know, like, uh, I, the supporters like really encouraging. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Uh, I know you've been really busy wrapping up this project to get it going, but I did a video the other night about my, um, a lot of people notice I'm like always pulling my shirt, my video, and, and most people don't realize I was in a really bad motorcycle accident, was in a coma, and it was oh, years geez. ago. And uh, so I did a video on that the other night, and man, I couldn't believe such positive, encouraging response. Like, I immediately, like the next day, wanted to make 10 videos because of how encouraging everybody was. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, so even, even like, I'm sure for you, and it is for me too, like the people that just go in there and say thank you, like, we love that love that stuff you know keeps you rocking yeah i i love uh i get success email stories all the time like hey i used your rebuild video my son and i rebuilt our oh, kx 250 love it because because your video or whatever we would have never been able to afford a shop or, or the know-how or whatever and then they send me some pictures i'm like dude that's awesome and yeah. then they sh sh send me pictures of, of them out riding the next weekend or whatever and it's just makes my day man honestly you yeah. know makes it all worth it it does. And I think uh, when I was teaching back at the college, we, we always once in a while, you know, you start to do something long enough, you can get burned out. And I'm sure okay. you've hit that burned out phase in making YouTube videos. The kids and the wife need you more than that garage sometimes, right? Oh, and yeah, uh, sure. we had this recommendation that really worked well for us in teaching. And we kept a folder next to our desk that was called The Reason Why. And you'd go in there and you'd look at these testimonies or these... Uh, these uh, videos and what I thought about doing in my shop here uh, uh, 
I've seen where people like different channels say, hey, send me a sticker or send me a license plate. I've seen Dale Boyd Garage does license plates. And what I was thinking I'd like to do is I'd like to do a wall of photos, like where subs could send in that carb that they fixed, that engine that yeah. they fixed, that that meeting. Like how many times have I met someone in a gas station that they like see my shirt and like, oh, I love that channel. And then they realize like, Holy shit! Are you are you that guy? You know, oh, man, you're you're that famous already, huh? Well, awesome. no, it's it's been the it's it's usually been a motorcycle event, so it's not oh, okay. it's not like the, the no, local. No, still, I mean, it's not just like the local. Any, uh, but the the, have, the stuff that I do is so much around uh, schools and whatnot. It's it's I'm not famous, so I don't even want, I wish, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Um, no, you know, that's a good idea. I've been meaning to do that. Um, it's funny. I haven't even bought. I bought a printer earlier this year. I haven't had a printer ever. I don't know how long I went with. You know, I just print stuff at work. You know, but you know, we've been at anyway. I have a printer now, so I should print it out. I mean, you know, so like right there, just stick it up in the back of the garage. All those testimonials. That's a good idea. I yeah. Think I'm do that. And then when you're having one of them days, you know. Uh, you can look over and be like, ah, oh, I remember why, I remember why. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I'm just going to bring this up to the universe right now is that I'm going to open that door. I can see a wall right now that I think would look really cool. Um, you know, I got something from recently that just tickled me pink and freaking it just, well, I guess it wasn't recently, but since I've moved so many times in the last three years, it seems like it. Okay. But was, uh, Icky Bon Moto sent me stickers and a little note. And I just, that cracks me up. I know you got a chance to actually work with them because you guys are, and we're all Midwesterners. But, uh, when I opened that package and, and he took the time and people take the time to send that stuff, I'm telling you, that's, I got to hang that stuff up. I'm looking at Icky Bon's, his stuff made it to my toolbox. So, uh, oh man, fun stuff. Yeah, he's going to be stopping in at some point. I just don't know when. But, yeah, he'll be back. Uh, we're going to do something together. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, he doesn't live far from me. So Yeah, small world, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I love it when somebody tells me, Icky Bond, man, dude, I love you. Don't don't get this wrong. But I love it when somebody says, I always turn to Icky Bond to learn how to do things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. it, it must be the micro scissors that like sell it off or whatnot. Oh, you know? dude, I need, I need to get some little fireworks and stuff. And, oh, uh, I love it. You know, it's it, some sparks here. So. His channel is so amazeballs for, for, uh, like we know what he really means, right? Like, and other sure. people do too. Other people know like, well, what he really means is this. It's so, like when somebody says they're learning, it just so cracks you up. But I don't know how many times. I would say probably, oh, God, I, I, I don't want to 100% speak to it, but I think it was like anodizing or it was electroplating or something. And, like, there was enough shit in his video that made me question and go look up, like, well, what were they really talking about? And then I get on this, like, two-hour rabbit hole of, like, how I'm going to electroplate my own parts or something. And so I always remember that stuff. But that was super, super fun. Uh, I think my my favorite video of his is, uh, I think removing gas tank dents. I don't, so he, I don't recall that one. Yeah, look it up. Like removing dents or something or scratch repair. Yeah, I th- and he has like this tank, and yeah, it's just <laughs> hilarious. So look it up. It's my favorite one. I remember you and Cody and I talking one time, and we all kind of like, I, I we were back in like that fifty thousand sub category. I know we're all like in that seventy or something now, sixty seventy. And, uh, you know, we were like, oh, how do we grow? You know, we were just having a fun night. We were all talking. And uh, and I said, you know, if I just wish I was a little better looking or have a smoking bod <laughs> or, damn it, I wish I was funny. <laughs> and yeah. our channels would explode. And somebody said, oh, like Icky Bon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know who it was, but oh, it was funny. But, yeah. yeah he's, he's got uh, over 100K already, man. Yeah, so, yeah recently I saw that. He's killing it. You know, in 100K, man, that's a pretty big uh, milestone to hit because I think from my research on that, that's where that decimal point, you know, moves. And uh, and that's another funny one. It's It's been a few months, but I, I saved, I saved like all these troll comments. I mean, when you're getting, you know, half a million views a month, th- there's a lot of comments, right? And sure, so out of yeah. half a million I'm t- a month, I, I average around 400,000 to 500 a, uh, a month. 
And I mean, I'm telling you, like, there's only ever, say, two, one to two bad a month out of, like, 10,000 good, right? Like, where people yeah. actually take the com time to comment. So, for a while there, I was, like, screenshotting all the troll stuff. I was going to make a video of all the troll comments. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I've really been good for a lot of years about not bringing in negativity. I, I don't do bad reviews. Like, if I have a tool I, I wouldn't use... I just don't review it or I say, Hey, I'm yeah. sorry. You know that. So I decided not to, but there's this one that came a couple months ago and this dude was livid. Like I've responded with the same question on 17 videos and, uh, that's it. I'm, I'm subbing from you and you'll never get another penny from me. And I'm like, and I went, I was like, Oh my God, did I miss. And sometimes I miss like people that actually donated and I don't catch it for a week or two until I get through that list. It, it sucks that a lot of that gets diluted, right? And so I felt bad. I went and I looked. I'm like, I don't even see they're a sub. They've never donated. They've never bought a sticker. Like, the lowest purchase price point of a, of a gear that I have uh, of merch was like $2.50. Like, I've never seen anything. <laughs> I go back and look. And I was like, oh, my God. They really commented the same fuel question on like 17 videos trying to get a response. And... <laughs> When they said, you'll never get another penny on me, I went and I did the math. I'm like, oh, yeah, for every view, it's .0001 of a penny. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? Like, And my girlfriend yeah. and I actually went and made this video where we made this spoof video where uh, she's sitting at the computer and I'm at my shop and she's like, oh, we got an email. And she like, we fast forward the car driving like a hundred mile an hour to the shop and she runs in, she's banging on the door. Hey, 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 you've got a comment. You've got a comment right now. And I'm like, oh, let me get my bat cave on and run to the computer and stop turning wrenches at 80 bucks an hour. To you know, This is so funny. And we never did make it. I probably should make it just for pure fun. Maybe yeah. I'd get a little bit of Ikebon uh, fan club out of it or something. I don't know, but... Yeah, I love, and you know, I love good you know, uh, I, I've experienced it where people leave YouTube comments and I don't get alerts oh, where yeah. like the co the comment appears, but I never got alerted that that comment was placed. So therefore I cannot re respond to it. Right. Uh, so that happens. Um, replies are the tough one because if you don't go back and look for them and like, and that's the thing, like people don't know the ins and outs of, of like what it is to be a creator. So it's, I get, I think, like you said, I think I get most comments, but like once you like reply once, it disappears. So like if you tell okay. someone like, hey, cool, awesome, thanks for the info. Um, yeah, I always soak my clutch plates and I say, what oil are you using? Like if I don't make a note to go back, I'm, I'm not going to get notified by YouTube that they actually replied back while well, I'm using Gear Saver, like for example. Okay. And I think people out there need to realize that's why it's better to be in one of our clubs or private memberships or whatnot is to really have that personal relationship because I get all of those because they're going directly to my email. Yeah. So for me, I think email works the best. I got a contact form on my website. Yep. Email is the best way to reach me. Um, another thing I hate is Facebook. Sometimes people message me and it hides out in the message request area. Yeah. Yep. And it'd be like a month or two and I'm like, oh shit, you know, there's a whole yeah. bunch of messages in here and I don't get notified. Yep. And I just hate, I hate Facebook Messenger. It just, yep. on my phone, it's, it's terrible. So anyway, for anyone out there, whoever wants to get in contact with me, email is the best. So absolutely. Absolutely. It always surprises me too. The lengths people will go to contact me other than my contact form. Right. <laughs> like, you worked really hard to get an email from six years ago. <laughs> like, that was really hard to find, but you didn't think to go to, you know, www.howtowrench.com and hit the contact us? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, funny. You know, a lot of our videos are old, too, but they're just so pertinent to the skill set, we haven't taken them down. You know, it's like... No, I mean... I had a guy the other day uh, was complaining about the audio, but he was really kind. He was like, oh, my goodness, the 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 content and this is great but it's so scratchy and i looked and the video was eight years old it's like <laughs> well dude i, I mean you, you know what it. i started yeah. with uh i started in 2012 with videos uh i used a 50 dollar flip cam that was refurbished it wasn't even new 
so it was like a piece of junk, right? Right, yeah. In terms of audio and video, it was so bad looking back. Um, but you know, you're put not only are you putting money, but your time to create videos for free in the beginning, right? Right. So it wasn't until like I actually started uh, like selling videos, I had enough money to buy a nice camera. Right. And then, like, buy all this stuff. I mean, you know, as you grow, you get a little income, and then you got to just reinvest it back into yeah. it's equipment. A wa- you know? It's a wash, so, you know? Yeah. So yep. My girlfriend, she goes kind of, she's kind of, I think, gotten used to it, but she can go a little crazy sometimes. And, like, I bought a mill here recently, and she's like, when will you use that? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but I bought a mill. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I finally used it, but it it, it sat here. I ch- I traded it for a trailer I bought to move over here from California, and so I think I traded the mill in March, and I just used it like a couple weeks ago to actually copy videos on YouTube where I saw where people uh, made snap rings on the pins for their press, so the pin doesn't just fall through like on the table, you know. So okay. it, it, you, it just doesn't fall through when you push it. And I've always been like, God, it's such a great idea, and I'm like. Yeah, but I need a mill. And so when I got done making, I haven't produced the video yet, but when I got done, I added up between the lathe, the mill, the press, between all the tools it took to make that snap ring, it was almost 10 grand, right? <laughs> like to cut a snap ring groove, you know? Oh, it's uh, funny. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I love me some oh, tools. I, I, I got tons of stuff in the garage here that uh, I don't use as much. Well, right here, the car behind me. Yeah, beautiful. I barely drive that. You know, a couple times a year, and I want to. I actually want to start doing some videos on this car. I remember you telling me that and, last time we talked. And 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 I know it's a motorcycle channel, but I think, who cares, right? I think we could all learn from from uh, a project like this. Uh, so I, I definitely want to start working on it. Other th- or I freaking sell the thing because it's taking up a lot of space. But I don't want to sell. It. I like it. So don't sell it. We'll see. You'll hate it. You know, yeah. the thing that I did, uh, and it's the same thing, it's a hit and miss, is I created an automotive playlist. And then, so the videos I make that are auto-related just go in that playlist. But then just a little tip for you, what I found is I made sure not to publish, not to like, uh, you know how like when you get done making the video and it says, do you want to publish this to your subscribers? I quit doing that okay. because I had people unsubscribing because they were so, oh, really? they were so like, oh, this isn't a motorcycle channel anymore. Like... Like the one video I did that I thought was going to be really, uh, just really useful. Well, it was useful to the people that got it was how to change a CV shaft by yourself. Okay. Right. And I'm like, you never heard of an ATV, a UTV? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. how, like it's, but they were so upset one person, right. They were so upset that I made a video on my, my Chevy K1500 truck. And I was like, eh, but you gotta, we gotta listen to our customers. We gotta listen to our subs in our fans. And so what I found is that when I make automotive videos, I just don't publish them or make the, you know, it's, there's one button you can unclick. So it doesn't go. And I've just told subscribers like, Hey, if you ever looking for something, get email me, I'll send you a, a link. If I got a video on that. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. And then make all the dang Chevelle content in the world because the people that are going to find it are the Chevelle lovers anyway. Right? Like, yeah, they'll still, it's still a sure. public video. It's just that you're not, Sending out the notification. Yeah. Hey, you know, and I'll throw that out there. Uh, I know Matthew's not far cut from the same uh, thread as me is that we love comments. And so if you have, like, requests for either one of us or, like, uh, you're ever wanting, you know, curious, like, hey, not only do you have a video on this, have you ever thought of making a video? I've A lot of my video content has come from subscribers requesting, like, how do you do this? I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. I, I never thought to make that or something. Right, so. Right. Uh, feel free to drop a comment, uh, you know, what you like, what you don't, all that stuff. We love the feedback. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, brother, yeah, sometime, I... Oh, go ahead. So, sometimes I get requests for super specific year, make, and model and this problem. And, it, you know, the chances of me getting that model in here and doing that is next to impossible. I mean, I, I write it down. Yep. But, you know, um, for those that are listening, um, I so I service bikes, too. I started uh, servicing bikes here in 2011, just for my home garage, and that's where the content came from. Um, now I haven't accepted a service job in like two years, though, because I've just been buying my own projects and working on it. 
Um, so that's been fueling the, the content. Um, I actually got a guy dr- dropping off an RM85 tonight for some jetting. But other than that, it's because I know him really well and he's, he's been a good customer and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I, I tapered down on the servicing stuff. And now I have, I've also added kids to the family, right? I got four kids now, so I have less time, man. You know, I – Sometimes I'm getting up at 4.30 in the morning to edit videos or I come out the garage like a crazy person and I throw on all my lights and people are like, what, a freaking UFO is landing back there or something? But, yeah, I get out here early or I'm out here late at night, um, and that's how I work, you know? I hear you. We, uh, I was always in the space of training technicians, so I wasn't trying to take work away from local dealerships. It was more like, hey, I'm, I'm here looking for content. So most of the work we took was crazy difficult electrical. Uh, and a lot of times I wouldn't have a scan tool or something. It was just plain going to need to be required. We're working with a company called Texa uh, Diagnostics right now to try and get their uh, scan tool to make some content on. But you're right about people being really specific. And we How to Wrench has a huge following in Europe and United Kingdom, India, and uh Australia is really growing, but people from India, especially all the time, ask for that really model specific. You know, like, here's a video that's the same skill set, but to say, like, can we fix your, you know, import vehicle, like that specific one? Yeah, we, we have a hard yeah. time of hitting it too. The other thing, sure. the other thing, uh, um, we get pounded, and I probably need to reel it in, is we do an insane amount of, when I say we, it's only me. I've just talked that way forever. <laughs> it's me, myself, and I. Because I do yeah, an right. insane amount of carburetors. Uh, those are almost always customer ones. But they're always ones like they've either taken to dealers, tried themselves, and they're like, it's going in the garbage. Like, no, 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 we can fix it. And we charge for it. We don't, we're don't. we not a pro bono shop. But uh, let me show you. I think my – give me one second. Give me one sure. second. I'll show you the shop. You haven't seen it. Computer's getting low. I didn't think we were going to chat this long, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure this can go on for hours, dude. But uh... we'll, probably, we'll probably change it. Let's see if I can. Uh, yeah. Can you? Uh, yeah, you can see the shop now. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's so big, we, dude. Uh, let's see if I can get. Uh... So what's what square footage are you at? Uh, 3,300 now. Nice. Yeah, we've actually got some room. Let me see if I can pin this so I can see it. Yeah, and we do, like I said, some rare customer stuff, the CBR 400, just because I personally wanted to work on it. I'm <laughs> like, yeah. this exotic little thing. But this was really cool, and I know you got the prop tech tools as well. Yeah. Um, we still haven't got to play with them. It's just a matter of getting to that project, but I can't wait to get my hands on that. You used them on your CD, didn't you? Yeah, I use the uh, electrical tester and the sync tool. Nice. And then, uh, like, all this stuff in here, other than that CBR, this is just my own personal stuff. I really want to finish that up. I'm going to do that there. Uh, this is a little part of the station. Well, like, some of the videos that come up, I brought a tire machine. <laughs> it's like, how many oh, nice. tires am I going to change? I have, I have, like, eight here right now I need to do on my own, but I bought it because it was built and I wanted to see if I could fix it. You know, like, do I have... Um, hey Shane, is, uh, your your audio is fading because I think it's picked up, picking up on your other source there. Oh, you know gotcha. what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's just uh, this is the most of it now. I've actually moved the whole shop in here, other than the vapor blasting. So okay. the vapor blasting's out in the dirty room. I think you've seen gotcha. these training aids and some of them. Yeah, videos. I've seen those. Those are cool. Yeah. Now that I got a dedicated mill, man, I will really be able to kick it up a notch. Um, yeah. Sure. Super. Super stoked about that. Let me turn this back Oh, man, I, I wish I had more space. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, but it, here's the reality. People have been kind of confused about our situation, and it's that I've, uh, when I got this space, it was meant to go full-time with How to Wrench. Like, that was my complete intent. I started doing consulting and started offering <clears throat> myself to create training for corporations and whatnot. And unfortunately, or not unfortunately, fortunately, excuse me, fortunately, 
uh, the first consulting gig I got turned into such a great deal with that drone company that we they ended up making me an offer and I went full time. I would have never in a million years thought I'd go work in that space, but flew to Africa twice now to train their technicians. Uh, you know, I had to bump our meeting this morning with you so I could uh, yeah. do an emer- you know, uh, a training session or whatnot. So we, uh, I've been loving working for that company. What a fun space to be in, but once again. This shop has become a really expensive man cave. Like, I've got to think about the future. Like, it's just too much. Uh, half of these bikes I bought just to flip or sell or do some content on. I'm like you, man. I mean, yeah, you'll sure. you'll go like I got a I got a DL650 over there. I bought just because it has a bad crank, and people are like, "Why would you buy a bike with a broken crankshaft?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's going to be a ton of content." <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And I've yep. got a, you know, a dirt bike. I got an arm 125. I want to do a full restoration and then I want to give it away on the channel. You know, nice. like what, what year is that? Uh, oh, uh, one, I think a 2001 Suzuki 125 arm. 125. Okay. Uh, cause yeah. two stroke stuff, like my two stroke stuff is really outdated. So it'd be fun to do something more modern, especially, you know, I know even watching your videos, your editing gets better. Uh, all of us like get better over time. So like a lot of my stuff is just uh two stroke all my two stroke stuff is just super outdated it'd be fun to put a spin on it but then like we think about what's the value of making that content like they don't even make hardly any two strokes anymore you know it's it's well, more, more just because you're there's a lot of them to fix though right well you know i i've noticed that there's a niche for people who want two strokes because they're easy to maintain they don't cost a ton to fix and it's just a different animal as far as bikes are concerned. I mean, these new four strokes, man, you know, it, you need more skill to work on them, you know, with the valves and everything, adjusting them and the top end and all that stuff. I mean, rebuilding a two stroke is simple compared to one of those newer four strokes. And man, you, you blow up a new four stroke. It's expensive. You know, I've worked on a bunch of those too, you know, yeah. So. Yeah. There's no no doubt about. It. I just, I love a two stroke just because I love a two stroke. Yeah. I mean, I was riding. I got an O one KX two fifty. Um, it's up north. But anyway, man, getting on that thing and just ripping it around, it's awesome. You know, there's nothing like it. Right. Right. So. Man, hey, I know that uh, we uh, like I said we went probably way over what we were thinking, but I appreciate you taking the time. It's just always fun to kind of do some chatting and. Hopefully we can uh, uh, get you some sales on your new plans and push yeah, that out awesome. there to some do-it-yourselfers. And I just want to say thank you. So I'll get you a, a copy of this too so you can have it to upload for your audience. And I'll yeah, do the same absolutely. for mine. And, and uh, maybe one of these times we'll have to think too about some uh, wrench and some way we can wrench together somehow. Yeah, I'm sure that's possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, hey, man, I enjoyed right, talking to you. Thanks for being a pal and uh, make it a great day. And as always... Keep wrenching. All right, Shane. Thanks for having me, man. All right, see you, bud.